there's people across the world doing deals with other people on this side of the world, you know, and they're all active duty partnering together. So it's possible. And I just kept seeing that, like, I, I, the more I learned, the more I just realized I could do this. This is, this is nothing complicated. <laughs> Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day to you, whoever and wherever you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Oliver Perry, of course, and this is the Oliver Perry Show. Today, we have a guest. This gentleman is a former Navy petty off, petty, petty chief. I apologize. I'm in the Army, so I, I don't get words right sometimes. He's a Navy, he's a Navy petty chief, uh, former petty chief. He is a member of the GoBundance group. He is one of the founders of Active Duty Passive Income. And he teaches people to, particularly military members, to work in the multifamily field. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I, let me stop. He is also a best-selling author, which we'll get into as we talk as well. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Mr. Tim Kelly. Tim. Hey, what's man. Up, Oliver, thanks for having me, bro. It's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege, dude. It really is. Oh, man. The privilege is absolutely, unequivocally all mine. Um, you have been a huge influence on myself and inadvertently of course to my family and those who are around me just with your um just sharing your stories doing your lives and all that great stuff and i wanted to really get into that and we just jump right in so i wanted to make sure i gave you the floor and allowed you a moment to kind of give everybody a background on what you do who you are and then we'll just jump right into it yeah i mean it was you know you, you mentioned i just uh separated from the navy I was a senior enlisted leader. I was a Navy chief. Um, you know, this past September, I hit 15 years. And then November, I exited and just separated from, from the Navy. Um, no regrets. I learned so much. It was an amazing career. Uh, but then for the last five years, I was floating on a deployment in 2014. Just read a bunch of books and, you know, was always looking to improve my financial education and just my emotional intelligence and just grow. And then the more I learned about wealth building, the more I realized real estate is a, is a thing that anybody can get into. Anybody can invest in, just need to learn. So I just got off that deployment. I'm like, man, this real estate thing, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So I just literally just consumed every piece of content that I possibly could about real estate investing. And, you know, five years later, um, you know, helped close over a thousand doors while I was active duty. Um, built this amazing, you know, help build this amazing active duty passive income platform where we still feel like we're in the infancy startup stages. Um, and we have just amazing vision for the future. And I, I you know, I was able to become a millionaire in, in, in the military and achieve financial freedom, you know, at my 15 year mark. But there was a time when I literally just had no idea what, what the next step was or where I was going to go. I didn't even know what goals to shoot for. I had no idea um, you know, that I was going to be successful and I didn't think that I was going to be any good to anybody because I just didn't know it. But, you know, I just, there was a fire inside of me that just kept me continuing to grind and learn and network with others and take action on a daily basis. Um, and that's why you are you hear us talk all the time about that success triangle, man, learn, network, take action. Um, and that brought me to today, man. I'm in Pensacola, Florida. This was my last duty station in the Navy. I've been stationed here for about four years. And, um, you know, we, we, we're on the beach, we're loving it. And, and we're probably going to hang out here for a little bit, man. We, we love, we love Florida and love the beach. So, um, that's pretty much a little bit about what I got going on at this point, man, man, that's a crazy story. So I, first of all, we're going to get back to the thousand doors while in active duty, um, because 625 is my goal before I retire in five years. So if you pulled off a thousand, I might need to up my number a little bit, but we'll, we'll get into that later. I yeah, did want 100% to talk. Hundred percent agree. Right. <laughs> so here you go. There he goes. Here he goes. Uh, so one thing I did want us to make sure we talked about is not just the ADPI thing, but really the start of your journey because there's so many soldiers, sailors, um, Marines, Coast Guard, so many uh, airmen. All these people are out there, and they're in that same moment of time that you were. Can you tell me a little bit more about that story and how you decided? Okay, real estate's the way. And you, how you were really feeling versus how you got out of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I just kept <clears throat> wanting, and I also had that, always had that curiosity of learning more and asking why. And I was, I, it, it, 
I was uncomfortable with giving somebody else like a financial planner, a financial broker. I usually call them joker brokers because most of them are salesmen. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just, it was uncomfortable for me to let someone like that literally control my whole entire financial legacy. And even back then when I had no idea what I wanted to do, I wanted to leave a massive legacy and build generational wealth. I just didn't know how I was going to do it. Luckily, I had some interest in reading some books. Luckily, I stumbled across amazing, amazing books about real estate and, and about mindset and about abundance where I just had that curiosity and kept learning. And I'm like, the more I was reading and the more I put into my financial education and my real estate education, and the more I invested in myself and my own resources started getting mentorship and coaching and paid for, you know, some, some advanced real estate education. Um, I continued to invest myself and I just continued to learn. And that solidified my idea that, look, I really could make this happen. I'm seeing these other people do it. I, I didn't really at that time know that anybody did it while they were active duty. Um, but now, you know, just the people in our, our military multifamily academy mastermind, dude, like there's people across the world doing deals with other people on this side of the world, you know, and they're all active duty partnering together. So it's possible. And I just kept seeing that, like, I, I, the more I learned, the more I just realized I could do this. This is this is nothing complicated. And then you, once you grow as an investor and like learning the how to and the mechanics, I also realized how every time I was listening to podcasts, reading books, there's a mindset piece and a personal growth piece that has to go along with your education and your, in real estate. Right. You know, you personally have to grow and invest in yourself and learn how to be a better provider and learn how to be a better communicator, leader, philanthropist, all at the same time. Um, so make sure you go as you're learning all the how to and the mechanics of this game, make sure you guys are also growing as humans and you're just able to add more value to this world. Um, ultimately you're going to be reimbursed in income and abundance, um, with that is directly tied to the amount of value you give out and that you give to other people and the, and the, the amount that you're able to help other people. Right. So I don't know if I actually answered your question. I kind of <laughs> go off on tangents like that, but you can stop me at any time, bro. No, <laughs> man. That, <laughs> that was good. I liked it. I liked it. There is one thing you mentioned, and I, I go back to this every time on most of my interviews. We, we kind of go over the same thing because I find that there's certain things that are among the high performers that are almost always the same and consistent. The two that I've noticed so far is one, just go. Most of them just go and do. The other one is that self-awareness and self-education. I wanted to ask you, for you, that self-awareness part has clearly done a tremendous amount because you actually spoke about that twice already. What did you, what were you reading and what did you do to figure out more about self, that self-awareness to help yourself improve on yourself? Yeah. Where yeah. I think, that? um, and dude, self-awareness is so important. I, like we, we could talk about that just for the rest of this, you know, next couple yeah. hours, just the importance right. of self-awareness and how to improve and increase the, the your level of self-awareness. And, um, it, it's it's so important because until you know your strengths and your weaknesses and the way you're just your DNA is, mm -hmm. um, the way you're different from other people and how are you unique and what are what could you bring to the table, right? Having just that knowledge um, isn't very complicated to get, but it's just what high performers they do. They have a high level of self self awareness because then they know exactly what they're looking for. They they can know exactly what they bring to the table. They can be very clear in how they communicate those things. If you have a higher self-awareness, you're going to be able to communicate that better to your partners, your investors, you know, your, your potential, anybody that you work with in, in really business or any industry. Um, you know, but as far as self-awareness, dude, that's, that's the most important. And um, you asked what, uh, what, you know, some of those books, if I'm not mistaken. So some of the first books that I read that gave me the inspiration is that that was the last question, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, a lot of these, you know, are the ones that we all talk about. If you haven't gotten into um, the real estate investing yet and the whole mindset shift and why people like real estate, you know, some of the most influential books for me, um, number one, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the whole Rich Dad, Poor Dad series was was a massive influence from that first Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, the cash flow quadrant, you know, the loopholes of real estate. Uh, by Garrett Sutton, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's legal advisor, and then tax-free wealth 
I mean, these are all just very foundational books that got me really into the mindset. Like, look, I could do this. These are like taxes and legal. I thought that was going to be super complicated and all this, right. like, you know, this, you know, this malarkey that I would it'd be, I'll never be able to understand, but dude, that's right. not at all the case. Right. And so those are just a few of the books and, you know, some of the mindset books that really helped me understand I had to grow as a person, become a better leader, communicator, you know, how to win friends and influence people, you know, mm -hmm. probably the That's number cool. one business book of all time by yeah. Dale Carnegie. It's actually literally right here. If I could give you one book, you have to read that. This mm -hmm. is, should be required reading for anybody and everybody listening to this, how to win friends and influence people. It's literally a playbook of how to be successful. And it's not any of the like, complicated formulas. It's, all right, well, look someone in the eye when you're talking to them, you know, genuinely be interested in them and listen to them, like actually listen and not don't think about their response that you're going to give right. and um, just basic stuff. So that was massive, you know, Jocko's, you know, the extreme ownership um, and that dichotomy of leadership, David Goggins can't hurt me, um, you know, the go giver, an amazing book. So like the more I was listening to and reading books and mind feeding through podcasts and stuff, the more I was learning, like, look, this is how successful people think. And in this industry, this is how they do. And then I just had to go emulate it and I had to act. And right. I'm not the type of person, like you said, a lot of people like myself, that's just how my personality is. I'm more the ready fire aim. I kind of just ready. I'll just do, go after it and figure it out along the way instead of ready, you know, aim and then maybe one day fire that's just not how i'm programmed right, right. Um, i partner with a lot of people who are more highly analytical left-brained um you know meticulous with the numbers and, and detail oriented that's not what i bring to the table but i had that clarity and that focus and self-awareness right to know like this is what i bring to the table these things this is how i could add value to a deal help you close and operate blah 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 and it took a couple deals for me to understand that, you know, of, of partnerships and some of them were failed partnerships and, and all, all this, tr the struggles that came along with all that. But, mm -hmm. um, I'm so glad that you're talking about self-awareness, man. Cause, um, that, that's an amazing point. If you focus on your self-awareness for a short time, you'll, you'll be leveled up and you'll have a huge advantage in, in business. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. I, I think, like I said, self-awareness is probably like the one thing that, that in this entire journey into podcasting, into YouTube, into, IG that I've really decided, okay, this is where I belong. I belong, God knows, on video, and I don't, God knows why, on video, on audio, you know, I, I, I feel comfortable doing this kind of thing, but man, when you put me in front of that analyzation sheet, I'm just like, I just can't do this. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't for me, right? But hey, I most also, people huh? would, most huh? people would look at that, make that realization and go quit and be like, hey man, this is gonna be the brick wall that stops me in my tracks. Right. But you're clearly, you rose above that and you you knew better, right? So now yeah. Yeah. you're you're probably looking to partner with people who bring that to the table. And That's that is how the perfect partnerships are created, dude, you know? That's a fact, man. Yeah, I, and I, I, I got a couple partners now. I've got, what, matter of fact, you know Hema. Hema's, uh, God know, shout out to Hema if she's listening, and Joe, Absolutely. and Jamisi, my partners those guys fill in those gaps for me where I just struggle. I struggle with the numbers. I struggle with kind of the direct to seller kind of conversations. I am not an asset manager, but my God, when it comes to marketing and getting on the camera and getting from a microphone, I am super duper comfortable. And I just, I don't know. It's, it's always odd to me because even in those moments, I'm uncertain of myself sometimes. And I wanted to ask you, cause having the idea, the understanding that you're aware of self and knowing, okay, this is where I belong. But man, I can't tell you how difficult sometimes it is to look at that analyzation sheet and be like, okay, that's not my lane. And you're like, well, I want to make sure they're doing it right, that kind of thing. But my thought process is always, hey, if you don't trust them, why are you working with them? What what did you do to get over that kind of that slight self doubt on that back end of knowing about self and working with somebody else? Yeah. And I think me just inherently like yourself, that is one of the beauties of like you and I were, we're a lot alike in terms of our value and our right brain personalities. Right. And so we just are more, I think what I've learned and gathered people who have these types of, of uh, characteristics traits are just more vulnerable to and, and open to working with other people with a team and you know versus a, an introvert maybe more left brain someone who'd rather just do it themselves and kind of get all the details and they're the you, you they're the you know i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna do that like they take they, they do everything so i think by design we are more open to that 
Um, mm-hmm. And I also, that was an epiphany too. And I was learning about multifamily. I was like, look, the single family, like, look, most of it I would have to probably do for, with by myself and maybe I have one partner, you know, this and that. But with a large multifamily, like there's no way to do it on your own. So you have to work with a, an entire team and a, and a partnership in order to make it work. And for me, I saw a lot more value in just figuring out how to integrate into a team and how to bring value to a deal um, and, and have a much larger portfolio and be able to scale to a much larger portfolio, uh, which obviously results in more income, more abundance, more experience and just higher level, you know, um, networks. Um, you know, that made more sense to me than just trying to get a bunch of single families with my own money and all doing my own work. Um, so that's just one of the things that inspired me. And then it took a couple deals, like I said, for me to get that level of self-awareness. I was just the first couple deals I I was doing. I was just like, do let's do whatever it takes. I'm going to put together this, the best team that I possibly can. And then we'll just go for it and we'll kind of move forward and we'll just figure it out along the way. Right. Um, and so it, it took a, a bunch of failure, firing some property managers, some dissolved partnerships. Um, mm-hmm. But then that's why I'm bringing it all back to you guys and saying, hey, if I went, to get, went and did it again, this is what I would have done different. And this is these are the these are the steps I would have taken. Um, so, yeah, man, did I actually answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you did. You did answer my question because that's um, just like you said, it's it's knowing that self-awareness part and it's knowing, Hey, you have to be okay with having a team and having that, that struggle. You're just going to have to wrestle with it and kind of deal with it and understand, Hey, yes, you know, you're going to put yourself out there, but that's part of, you know, like you said, how you and I are built. And even those who are listening, who aren't, you know, underwriters or who aren't asset managers, you're going to have to understand that that's the part that you're not great at. And you're going to just keep, keep your head down and learn as much as possible. Um, This way you continue to be value added. So let's, Let's go and into sometimes I don't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead, sometimes please, please. you might have to try the underwriting and the asset managing and raising capital it's like to figure out where your groove is, because you may be very, very surprised that you may not want to like be an asset manager or deal with operations, but you might have mm-hmm. some some like hidden skills and talents that you never knew about. Um, until you kind of take them some some of those personality assessments and then trying to give it a shot. And, you know, you might be, 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 be pleasantly surprised um, at some form of work in this industry that you're going to be good at without, without ever realizing it. But you're going to have to maybe try a few things and give it your all and put effort into it to figure out what you're going to be best at. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? Because you might be an amazing capital raiser, but you're just like in deep down, you're like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm good at that. I'm afraid to go ask for money. But like, if you learned a couple things, you may be the best capital raiser around. Um, right. So I just wanted to say, you know, don't, don't like, like make ultimate decisions and let that and you know prevent you from from going out there and really trying all the different things in this business. Um, and and you can't sometimes you can't figure that out until you go out and do. Um, you know, and, and I know that stops a lot of people too, because some people are so analytical and they need to have all the data and they need to know exactly how it's going to turn out. Um, Mm -hmm. and that sometimes will stop you in this business. If you're not willing to just go out there, trust the process, trust your gut, take, take some calculated risks. Um, cause if you're not willing to, you know, ri- make some risks, um, then, you know, there, there's not going to probably be a whole lot of reward, you know? Right. Um, so. No, man, you're right. I mean, it's, it's the old adage, be comfortable, but being uncomfortable. It's, yeah. it's simply that simple. There's going to be stuff in the multifamily game that you don't like. Like I, I, like I said, back to underwriting, I don't like underwriting, but I swear to you, I've grabbed a, a book on it. I've gone through our underwriting modules and I've got to go through them like four or five times and hook up with team people in the group to figure it out. And once I do, at least I'll have a basic knowledge and I can be more aggressive, be more yeah. helpful to the team itself. You mentioned during that, that you did, you mentioned assessments. What assessment did you take to learn about you? Because I've done the disc, I've done the gallop, but I'm curious what assessment you took to learn more about Tim. Yeah, so there's, um, you know, the ones that we have integrated into the academy and the modules, the disc profile, the Myers-Briggs. And then there's another one called like a Harrison assessment that I actually ended up connecting with um, like a psychiatrist and we just got to know each other. And she was, I think she was at like a real estate meetup. Um, and then she ended up giving me this free assessment that she usually goes out and does for like high level C-suite teams to wow. really get to know. And it was like a full blown, like, like a literally a th- like she wrote a thesis on this thing. Oh. Just like, it was crazy. <laughs> um, awesome. So I was able to do that. And because of those things, like, 
learning the things like really understanding just how you're programmed by design you know are you more of an introvert or an extrovert are you more of the the type that's going to be more decisive are you a natural born leader are you an influencer for you know so like there, there's like if you don't know those things about yourself you might not be able to add a whole lot of value to people in business and in real estate investing um, so if you haven't done that yet, if you have not taken those, you can take a bunch of free personality assessments online. I mean, you could just Google the Myers Briggs, the DISC, D I S C, um, you know, just for a couple. And then, you know, just take a couple different ones and really look at it and like be honest with the answers and look, look at it, be like, huh, I didn't know about that about myself. And a lot of them are like scary and frighteningly like on point and accurate. Right. right. Um, so I, I'm all about like that stuff and not like, I don't geek out about like astrology or any of that stuff, but like, I, I believe that because of our astrological signs, that has a lot to do with how, how we just make decisions and go about and take action in the real world. So um, the more like the, the, that type of stuff that you know about yourself, the more you're going to be able to like capitalize on it and share that with other people. And until they know who you are and what you do and what you could bring to the table, like specifically, most people aren't going to want to partner with you and, and kind of go into business with you. You know what I mean? That's a fact. That's a fact. That brings me, matter of fact, that brings me to something I wanted to make sure we talked about too, is you, you and Kevin did a book and you did a book on uh, basically a 13 week journal. Um, and I've got it right here. And this, this journal this is actually the, the original rough copy, man. We had it like that really? all marked Good up. Good gracious. <laughs> look at the tabs. Like, <laughs> this is this is the rough. I look, just to, to show you the, the, the publisher. I've never I haven't shown this to anybody, but like this is the front of the book. And if if you see it, it's actually oh, upside down. It's upside down. Like the way that it's supposed <laughs> to be. The way that it's supposed to be. So that was like and this was the rough, the first rough copy, and wow. that's why like all these are the the original edits when we were right. going through like and we were when we were editing. That's and nice. so like this was I was I just got this one sitting here but yeah that's it's it really is the systems that we use um it's it's really like a goal planning system and it's a system of of accountability that you can create um and it's in within like you know a 90 day time frame in in the military a lot of times we say in 13 weeks like one quarter in the military yep. is 13 weeks so it's a 13 week journal and by that end of that 13 weeks you have to create a target, a 1000 meter target. What is that target? I want to get into my, you know, I want to close on my first deal or I want to, you know, invest in my first deal as an LP or I want to, you know, connect with five brokers who start sending me deals and you just plan it out for that 90 days and you reverse engineer, what are you going to do? And every day it's just kind of laid out like the morning routine, check those boxes. What are you thankful for? Check those boxes. What are your action steps for that day? Check the boxes. And don't forget, here's your, you know, weekly key to success and the mindset, you know, key to success. And then it kind of just, it's an accountability system. And uh, truthfully, we, we made this and we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears and, and time and energy into it. Uh, because if you're not willing to establish a goal and, and track a goal, like put a system in place to track the metrics and measure your goal and then put an accountability system in place for your goal, then you don't deserve to achieve whatever goals you have set out for yourself yeah if you're not willing to establish track and put an accountability system in place for your goals you don't deserve to accomplish them straight up and that's why this thing you put it on your nightstand it's going to remember every single day you know before you go to bed it's just tra like a journal entry and then tomorrow what am i going to do what is my one focus going to be and then boom you're you're already you're going to sleep already set up for tomorrow and right. you know you you wake up you see that thing you already remember and recall what you wrote in the night before and you're literally already in motion before you even get out of bed and so um yeah it's just again it's high high performance habits people establish their goals they have an accountability system in place they track their goals um and that is how you are able to achieve massive goals or some people would think are just in, insanely like just impossible right. um but it's, it's really up to you and, and the trajectory that you're setting for yourself. And a lot of that obviously is the, the your tribe and who you're spending the most time with. Right. So, yeah. So let's, matter of fact, let's get, now that you, you segue very beautiful segue, Tim. Well done. I'm so proud of you. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's segue. Hey man, great minds think alike, bro. These <laughs> right? are the topics that are going to pretty much add the most value. And, and Absolutely. if you're listening, man, this is some really good stuff that, that we're talking about that took Absolutely. me a long time to learn really. 
No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you because I'm. It's still something that I'm learning and I'm figuring out those morning routines, things of that nature. But you mentioned the tribe that you put yourself around. How do you create that tribe? Because we all hear constantly, "Hey, you know, your network is your net worth." Hey, surround yourself with the right people. But when you're in it and you're in around those people that quote unquote you shouldn't be around, and let's not let's not go to the extreme of they're doing something illegal or un, immoral and unethical. It's more, you know, somebody you grew up with. Y'all play video games, and you you had to work your way out of these things. How did you find that tribe to place yourself around? Yeah, man. Um, and it's I can't. I, I mean, I can't even scream loud enough how important this is that, you know, just to drive your point home, man, you, you list the five or 10 people that you literally for over the last year spent the most time with, you put all their names on the left-hand side of a piece of paper, right. you know, and then across the top, you write how much they weigh, how they dress their income, you know, how much money is in the bank account? How happy are they? How do they treat their spouse? How much do they love their kids? Like all these things, those 10 people that you're spending the most time with, like you're going to be an average of all that across the bottom. That is you, that is your avatar, right? right? So right. you have to be very, very intentional on not only like who you're spending time with, but what you're mind feeding, what you're putting into your brain, what you're listening to the podcast. Are you watching news, CNN, constant negative news? It's just, which is the complete right. opposite of Fox news. It's from two completely unbiased, you know, biased parties. So like, what are you mind feeding and being intentional with who you surround yourself with and the tribe that you pick, it's never easier than right now and how accessible the internet is and how the groups on Facebook, on LinkedIn, the different virtual meetups, all the free Zoom calls and like video conferences. Guys, like that all, all it really is is being intentional and making sure you are putting yourself in a room with people who are more successful than you. And people who are already doing what you want to do. And sometimes it's not going to be like, oh, just a quick five-minute search. Sometimes it takes a while to find and get approved for. And it might take some money to get into those right groups. And when people say you have to invest in yourself and you have to invest in coaching and, and mentorship, that's what they're talking about. I mean, I, you don't even want to know how much I pay on an annual basis to be surrounded by people who are way, way more successful than me. On an annual basis, I'm paying a lot of money just to be in those in those groups of people, in those tribes, but insurmountable return on investment because I'm I mean, when I'm with people who are eight figure, nine figure net, you know, net worth, where that's where I'm trying to be in the next year or two, those people like just hanging out with them, seeing what their strategies are, how they think through things, whether it's virtual or in person, um, that is where you have to be super intentional and make sure you're hanging out you know, in, in those crowds, whether it's in person or virtual, right? Because right. like you kind of alluded to your friends that you grew up with your whole life, your family, as much as you love them and that you're, you have an emotional attachment with them, inevitably they're actually weighing you down, right? In most cases, I'm not saying for hundred percent, I'm never going to say blanket statement like that. That's, that's bold and that'd be ignorant. But most of the time, if you're listening to this and it's resonating with you, your family, your friends, maybe your spouse, like they might actually be pulling you down without you even realizing. Not that they're going to be like, oh, you're crazy, you're stupid, blah, blah. Just like their attitude and their demeanor and they're not the fact that they're maybe not supportive because A, either they will they can never see themselves achieving that goal, so they call you crazy for thinking that you can achieve it, right? right. Meanwhile, you're going to just prove them, prove them wrong, and that's literally the best revenge for those people, right? So that's probably the hardest is, understanding that like the people that you love hanging out with people you know your friends and your family your relatives you have to just you know share the love and support with them but make sure you're putting yourself you're spending time with people who are already have done the things that you want to do and who are willing to pull you up um and and then you know and you're looking for people who you could reach up to then they're willing to pull you up and then you reach down and bring people up with you um, right. to, to that next level. And so, um, kind of, again, another tangent, but I think I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely answered the question, man. I, I, I appreciate that answer. That is, um, I don't know. I, I can't tell you how important that is to me on, on top of, of course, the self-awareness. There's just like certain things that you just have to learn. And as a matter of fact, that very first story you told about, right. Or the, the instruction you gave of writing down a list in weight, height, age, uh, 
net worth, all that stuff, income, all that stuff. It's straight out of the Tribe of Millionaires book, and it is the exact same thing that you sit down, my man, my man. So <laughs> if, if you Guys, can't, if you haven't, if you haven't read this yep, yet, you, it's, you can probably get it for free right now. Pay, just cover shipping. I'm in a mastermind with the with the authors and and the co-authors, David Osborne, Pat Hyman, Mike McCarthy, and Tim Rode. I'm in the mastermind with them, Go Abundance, and they kind of put out this is like basically the, the whole formula for why your tribe will make or break your success and the different effects that come from hanging out with certain people and just making sure you are, you pay attention to the caliber of people um, who you're spending your time with. So yeah, man, uh, it's, it's a life change. It's a life changing group of people, man. And I'm so blessed to be part of it. That's that is absolute fact. I'm not even there yet. I'm in the early program by the name of the send. Um, If you'd like to get emerged, shoot me a message. Let me know. My email will be in the show notes or something, and I'll, I'll spit it out a little bit later as well. But let me know, and we'll get you squared away. But it is, hands down, probably the most influential group I've been a part of, um, or one of the top two, at least, at minimum. Um, and, and I've been in quite a few, but this one has, is something different. There's just something about it, and there's something great about it, and I'm enjoying it so far. So let's talk about, Tim, your experiences with – going to go back to real estate – you found your team. You're going after your first deal, and we got. I've got a story I want. I I've heard, and I want the audience to hear. It's the honey, the the honeybee story. But we'll we'll go to that later. But I wanted you to talk about getting into that first deal, and then kind of how it snowballed after that. Because getting to a thousand units is a lot in a five year time span. Yeah. But I don't think people understand how quickly that ball can roll when you get into the multifamily game. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. I did. Like, you know, I, I got to Pensacola, um, see January, February of, of March uh, or January, February of, of 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally that month I had closed on a fourplex, like just moved here and closed. It's because we planned on it. We were networking with people. The minute I got orders to Pensacola, I was networking with people, build, uh, you know, a, a small team and got to know who the property managers and agents were and I already walked the property. So the, mo- the month I got here, we closed on a fourplex using the 203k FHA loan and we were able to force a bunch of rehab into that loan. And then six months later was that 42 unit deal. And so before to Pensacola, I already had the decision made at my last duty station, which was the Virginia beach, Norfolk area. I already had the decision made that I was going to go for large multifamily. So that's I I already knew. And that's all I was focusing on. And the fourplex for me, I had to take advantage of the house hacking opportunity. And so that was the intentions for that fourplex. Right. But I knew big scale. Like I I wanted to do the large multifamily. So during that six to nine months, when I got orders to the point where I moved here, I was finding the people. I already was a part of the, the local RIA, the real estate investment association. I already established a name for myself like in the before i even got there a lot of people in that um networking circle knew that i was looking for and i was a multi-family investor and um because because i kind of gave myself that label and i convinced myself that is who i was and that is what i was doing and that's what i was in the process of doing it now it's all about just meeting people and networking with people and figuring out exactly what is that thing that you need well i need to talk to a broker um, okay, when you talk about, well, what do you need about, you know, with that, I, I need to find deals and I, then kind of going a little bit more granular, being very, very specific on your criteria and knowing exactly what you want. And at that point, I didn't have that, that level of self-awareness. I was just trying to get into a deal, trying to get a deal done, trying to figure out how to put teams together. So like the first couple deals I did, that was a 42 unit deal. And then shortly after that, bought my first mobile home community. It was like 27 pads here, um, North of Mobile. And then after that, it just was another apartment community. Meanwhile, I was still buying the small multifamily to house hack and where I was living in the Pensacola area. And then, you know, after that was like another 75 pad mobile home park and then a 250 unit. Like after that, it was just now I knew what I was able to bring to the table. So I was able to kind of focus my efforts to the other co-general partnerships and let them know like, look, this is what I could bring to the table. People were reaching out to me for, you know, to, cause they knew I was able to raise capital. They knew I had, I had um, relations with brokers. They knew I had deal flow. Um, so that's kind of what I was bringing to the table. 
Um, and because of that, I was able to get into more deals and help close more deals um, throughout that time. And that's all I was focused on. And then the funny thing is like, I was able to do that, but like halfway through that, ADPI was born and like we were also building this big you know, like ecosystem of for the community and the education and then finally the financial services division and we're still like I said in infancy stages but in 2017 was when that kind of started getting off the ground so like simultaneously I was doing deals and I was building ADPI as an active duty chief in the Navy you know and so luckily, you know, I just had a, a pretty, I wasn't deployable for the Navy. Right. So I was on shore duty, meaning I was like a basic nine to five job. But as a senior enlisted leader, I had a pretty flexible schedule. Um, so I was able to hustle and grind and really capitalize on every single minute of my off time and my free time. I knew exactly what I wanted. And the whole plan behind that was to create enough financial freedom where I had options to get out before I hit my 20 years. And that's exactly what I did. I got out at my 15 year mark because I had more, more income and more streams of, of revenue and other options where I didn't have to stay in the Navy and continue doing something that I wasn't passionate about. Um, whereas I just had the other, other opportunities. So it was an easy decision for me at that point. Bro, I love it. That's, that's the kind of value I like. All right. Sorry. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I'm getting hype. Uh, so I, I gotta be respectful of Tim Tom. So Tim, before we get into the last part of this, and God willing, hopefully we'll get big enough and I'll bring you on again and we'll do it a second time. I've got to get you to tell the story. That's that's not an if. That's just a matter of time, dude. And that's up to you. Dang, got it. Man, he got me again. He got me. See, this is the kind of motivation I need. I appreciate it, Tim. That was good stuff. You're absolutely right. It's not if. It's only a matter of when and it's all up to me. That's an absolute fact. So I want you to tell the story about, if you if you don't mind, of course, the story about the bees and the multifamily that experience. Cause that, that is a wild story. I think people deserve to hear that kind of perseverance and that yeah. shift you guys made in that, in that. So I'm gonna give you the floor. Go for it, brother. First deal. So many mistakes, so many struggles. I uh, had to fire the property manager, had to fire a couple of general contractors, but long story short, we, um, we had the deal under contract. We closed during, you know, we were rehabbing a bunch of the units, saw a bunch of bees flying around one of the units. You know, we're like, all right, this is a little more than just normal. We need a beekeeper, someone, a, a professional come in here. Let's, let's have them, you know, do their sniff test or whatever they do. So it turns out there was literally a honeycomb, like a, a bee freaking massive honeycomb four feet by like six feet, literally just inside the wall of, of the apartment unit. And so like, I have pictures, I know I did the whole entire um, deal walkthrough for you guys where I took you through that whole full cycle deal. And I, so I know I showed you pictures and like, we literally had to just completely have that removed and take it out. And like, with beyond that, that was like our least of our worries. There was other like mold issues, utility issues, all the different appliances were like failing and they're outdated. We were like breaking all these different codes that we didn't even know about. Thank God, it, you know, we didn't get any kind of into any kind of legal hot water. But, and, but so we were really struggling through the first deal of trying to figure out um, how we were going to get our NOI up and raise income and decrease expenses because we raised capital and we basically promised to pay our investors after year one and, you know, start generating some cash flow year between year one and year two. And so like fast forward, we're trying to get all this stuff done. And like for the whole year goes by, you know, couldn't really um, give them any distributions, monetary distributions. So like just before that, we decided to take this honeycomb and make honey and like literally put them in jars. And that was the first investor distribution was a jar of, of sweet honey from old Citronelle, Alabama. And, um, and so that was, uh, that was that story. And it was definitely something I'll never forget. Uh, my partner and I, Jay Helms, we, uh, we found that deal. He's got an amazing community now, the W two capitalists. And then my other partners, J Jeremy Hans and, and Robert Preston are doing amazing deals. Now they're still both out of Pensacola, both military guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if I if I hit the mark in in what in the story, but uh, you know, if uh, is that what you is that the story you want me no, to tell, that's, man? That's that's one hundred percent the story. the The wild yeah. part to me was when you guys actually turned it into you actually started selling. Or were you selling or are you giving away the honey itself? You put it in jars, <laughs> prettied it up, the whole nine, <laughs> and you were able to yeah. give away some of those jars. That was that mess is absolutely amazing. 
So yeah. now with that said, let's let's get real quick into segments, and this will we'll close it out with this. And one of the questions that we normally ask, you already answered already, um, and that's uh, just talking about the, the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you don't have it, go get it. Let's start there. So the next thing we want to talk about is something we call Troop to Task. And all it is is you give the listener and viewer one thing they can do right now to take that first step forward, and I'm going to give you the floor right now. Yeah. I mean, first step forward, I assume – you know, you're, you're talking about they, they want to break into, you know, a side hustle or a business or investing. Um, if, if you could remember that success triangle that we talk all about in active duty, passive income is the learn, network and take action. Right. Remember those three things like every single day, learn more about whatever you want to learn about, whatever the industry is. Let's say, for instance, real estate investing, learn as much as you can about all the different ways that people make money in real estate. Right. And then learn just enough for the sole purpose of choosing one and becoming an expert. So kind of go vert like horizontal across all the the classes and strategies, flipping single family rentals, the birth strategy, commercial, you know, storage facilities, like go horizontal, just learn a little bit about each, just to choose one and go vertical, go deep, become the expert at it. That's your learn as you're learning about all this stuff, network with other people who are currently doing it or who aspire to do it um, and who are willing to help you and support you and maybe help, you know, mentor, mentor you. So you're learning as much as you can while you're networking. And every single day you have to create action steps for yourself to move that needle forward. Um, you know, it's, I, I want to keep it as high level as possible to a, so it's applicable in a di- uh, in different facets um and i gave that one example but man i mean if you could just stick to that those three pillars that success triangle that is literally just a recipe for success in any new endeavor if you if you think about it um but be very intentional continue growing as a, as a person as you're learning all this stuff about you know real estate and the mechanics of the how to and how to raise capital and and how to find partners and how to analyze deals also learn and grow as a human, right? Professional development, personal development, and create and use that 80-20 E to E ratio with all your free time. 80% of it needs to be dedicated to growth, education, you know, meditating, working out yourself, right? Therapy, whatever it is. And then the other 20% of your free time should be entertainment, going to the movies, taking your spouse on a date, hanging out with the kids, going to see live music. Um, whatever it is, whatever you like, like, like to do, be very intentional with your time. Um, cause time is really the only thing that, that we can't get back. It's the only asset that we can't get back. And truth, truthfully, it is the reason why I even got interested in this. Um, because with more abundance and more wealth, you have more time and you have more options and you have more freedom. Um, and that's what I, I would like to choose to do with my time. So I want to spend it with the people I choose, that I, people that I want to hang out with, do the things that I want to do um, on my own time. And, and when you learn all this stuff, you, you fortunately are able to uh, give yourself more time. You could create literally more time like it's out of thin air. It's pretty awesome. Mm, so much. Man, Tim gave you all more than just one. I just want you guys to know that you guys are cheating right now, and Tim's giving you all the gold he can. So let's, um, Tim, I'm going to ask you one more question. And this question is, let's just say it's one of the more, more difficult questions. So this question is as follows. What question do you wish you were asked more often? Um, like right now or earlier in my career? That's up to you. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I I love sharing what is your definition of success? Okay. Um, I wish more people asked me that, uh, cause I think, uh, I think my answer is, is very, um, thought provoking and gets people thinking about success in a completely different way. Cause it's definitely not about money. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, that's 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 awesome, man. That's awesome because that that is absolutely a fact. It, and then on top of that, for those who are and you say this all the time, Adam says all ADPI, all the Go Bros, and all this. Everybody says this all the time. If you're after the money, that's not your why. The money is never it. The money is not the thing that's going to keep you going in whatever you're after. So I'm not going to take any more any more of your time, Tim. At least not today. 
uh, I'm going to give you, I want to make sure you have the opportunity to tell people how they can get a hold of you and to reach you. So I want you, if you could please give them, give them that information. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to leave people hanging, you know, with the answer to that question. Okay. Um, you know, I wish people asked me more, what is my definition of success, success? And this is not going to be very long winded. Um, but I, I think success is, is really directly tied to the level and quality of your relationships that you have, your closest relationships with your spouse, with your kids, your, your family, your inner circle, the, like the people who have the best relationships in, right. uh, of the, in, inside of those circles are in my mind, the most successful. Um, and a, a lot of times money is a motivating tool because it does bring freedom and, and time and abundance. Um, but that's not really an end target. It shouldn't be an end target. Um, because it's, it's the money doesn't make the thing. It's the people who, who sometimes abuse the money and, and give it a bad stigma. Um, so while you're grinding and while you're spending a lot of time learning and networking and taking action, um, make sure you carve out, um, an abundance of time for the most important people in your life. So, um, the best way to get a hold of me, I mean, I, I'm all over LinkedIn at the Timothy Kelly, all over Instagram at the Timothy Kelly. Uh, I'm in Facebook, usually exclusively inside of our multifamily academy mastermind um, in ADPI Facebook, you know, group or the main ADPI Facebook group where it's just a bunch of military investors trying to learn, network, and take action every day. Um, so I love kind of adding value there. Um, but man, if, if you heard me on on this call um, and, and you, you like what you heard, just shoot me a text, man, and and we'll hop on a we'll hop on a call, and uh, I'll I'll guide you or answer questions or maybe I could learn something from you. So you could just shoot me a text at eight four seven nine one zero nine one six one. Man, let me know you found me or you you heard me on um, this awesome show, and uh, and yeah, we'll just I'll shoot you a link or something. We'll get on a call. Awesome, you are the man, Tim. Thank you so much, man, for coming on. Thank you so so much for coming on. I can't tell you how honored I am to have you on. How much of an influence you've been and how much of an influence I intend on ensuring you continue to be uh, as I make this climb forward. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys continue to grow, and I'm looking forward to being part of it. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you got as much value as possible out, out of this. If you have not, shoot me an email at info at the Oliver Perry Show, and I will tell you I'm going to give you any and everything I can to get you some value. So until next time, you're better than you were but you're not half as good as you're going to be. We'll see you again soon.